Hi everybody, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. You are joining me in the middle of uh, my fall series or autumn series, just making some really fun autumn cards. Those always are my favorite because I love the colors of fall. Those are my colors anyways. In fact, we're getting ready to do my redo our kitchen and I'm torn between navy, which is kind of classic, or I really want to do like artichoke or evening evergreen and pumpkin pie. So, um, our new refrigerator comes today, so we'll be deciding, but I just love those colors. Um, my husband's kind of on board with the 70s look retro kitchen, except our kitchen's farmhouse, so you know, it's a whole twist on old colors. But um, today's card is also one in my series of The Art of Stamping, which I have been doing that over the last couple of months, and then my retreat is actually this weekend. It's an online retreat, and the theme is Art of Stamping. So for it, I use the Perfect Partners, but, um, Probably towards the end of next week, I will open registration for kind of a mini retreat. We're not going to do as many cards, but it's going to be the art of stamping with a Christmas theme. So I have to decide exactly what stamp sets I want to use. And then you can sign up for that if you're interested. It'll it'll be online um, and learn some fun techniques with some of our beautiful Christmas sets. So if you've missed any of the ones of the fall cards I've done, and these are not all the fall, fall cards, these are the ones with Fond of Autumn. When I get to the end of the series, which will be in a couple days because I do want to move to Christmas, but I have so many, I want to use the cottage wreath still and this, the set I'm using today, I have more ideas than just one card. So we're going to go a little bit longer with the fall one, um, but by October, we will definitely be doing Christmas. So this is Fond of Autumn. This is not um, Art of Stamping, although it kind of is because it's, it's just a simplified version. And then this is where we really get into it was blends on the craft paper. And then this one is a variation of the technique that we're using today. So this is the brushed metallic gold cardstock, and we're gonna use that again today. So this, all three of those have videos on my channel. But today we're gonna use Hello Harvest. It's a really easy card, and if you've never done well, the, the one technique is fun, and it is the one that we're ending in, in my um, retreat, the current retreat. But if you've never done no line water, water coloring, this is the perfect stamp to give it a try, because it's open, and it's easy to do, and we all know what color pumpkins are, so it's a really um, good one. But this set has fun dies, and I'm not using the funnest part of the dies today. That's why I have to do another card. So um, check back in a couple of days, because I'll have another one. So it is a bundle. And so it has, the dies are beautiful. I'm gonna use espresso for the base. Then I'm gonna use water our watercolor cardstock. And this is in the catalog. The, everybody that just did the retreat, we're doing a few cards using the watercolor cardstock. And it's important to use it for this card because we're gonna add a lot of water. And then this is the brushed gold metallic. And I have run it through already the timber um, embossing folder because I want it, there's a, this card doesn't take long. All of the artist stamping cards tend to take a little bit longer. One, there's usually drying time because if you're doing something artsy with it. Um, and then because on this one, we're painting. This is my spritzer and it is filled with 91% um, rubbing alcohol. So I'm just going to take this here and you want to try to get it so it spritzes and not sprays because, you know, sometimes these get clogged. So I always like to give just a little practice one. And make sure that it's spritzing and kind of how high I want to hold it. So it's spritzing. So I'm just going to put this on here and it takes a minute for it, the alcohol to activate. See, that was kind of a spray. So we'll leave that for just a second and you can see it starts, the color starts to separate. But then I want it to be a little bit more amplified. So I'm going to take my blend. And this is the 100, so it's the darkest of the natural tones. You could use, um, we don't have an espresso blend, but we have soft suede, and then we have all of the browns in the natural tones. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of ink on here. And this way we'll get a little bit of ink, because we don't wanna ruin what we just did. I have waited just a tad too long because I was talking. It's best to do it kind of while your alcohol is wet because it'll ble bleed a little bit more. Now you can start to see where it's hitting where it's wet. We have the paper that's activating with itself and then also the, the blend is activating. And I will get a good close-up picture of this on my blog so you can see it. I'll hold it up for a second. I think it's in a shadow. 
but it's a really fun effect. This one looks way different than my other one because the other one ended up with a couple of splotches. And because I also, once I put the blends on here, I gave it another shot. I'm not going to do that for this one. So it'll be a little less of the, the splotchy. And then you can decide which one you like better if you're going to make the card and you can see the two different looks. It's starting now though to kind of, you can kind of move the alcohol around although it's starting to dry. Isn't that pretty? It gives it a really nice rustic barn wood, although it's metal. So I guess some kind of metal tin roof. <laughs> Look, super pretty. You could do the bricks. You could just do a pattern. Now I'm going to take um, the large stamp. Well, let's do the Hello first. So I just went with the Hello. I do love the stamp set. It has a set, a stamp that says, um, you are such a blessing. But for this one, that one didn't really fit. This one looks a little bit better on the outside of my card. So what you do is you put this on the out and then you outside because it looks good. And then you put, you are such a blessing on the inside. So when you're stamping on the watercolor paper and you want it to be dark and bright and vibrant, which the early espresso will be because it's that kind of a color, but I always like to hold it just for a second longer. And that way it gives the paper time to absorb the ink. Isn't that pretty? Again, it's a nice kind of farmhouse look. I'm going to take the big pumpkin and I'm going to stamp it in Sahara sand. I'm going to grab a dry piece of paper background paper. And then I'm going to stamp my pumpkin in Sahara sand. Now I would recommend that you use soft saffron, but if I use soft saffron, you guys won't be able to see it. So I'm going to stamp once, get most of the ink off, and then I'm going to stamp over here. This was a whole sheet. So I've used now the, this was my other card. So you could get four cards out of one sheet of the watercolor card stock. So you want your, you want to be able to see your image, obviously, and the Sahara sand, I think, will allow you guys to see it a little bit better, but you don't want to see it at the end. So that's how you pick your color. Because this pumpkin has some yellow in it, so saffron is a good choice. The bottom part doesn't have any brown. I'm going to be able to cover it up. But if you start with saffron, then you don't have to worry about color, covering it up. So I'm going to use pale papaya, crushed curry, Cajun craze, and pumpkin pie. Now you could do a variation of a lot of these. Um, a yellow, a light orange. I think pumpkin pie is pretty necessary. And then you could use um, calypso coral. You can kind of mix them up. And if you have some of our old retired colors that are similar, you could use those too. Because we have had some that have retired that re make really good pumpkins. So we're going to do a couple of little things. We're going to do the whole, not the whole, but cover the base in crushed curry. But I want this to have just a little bit of glisten. It's like in the 40s. So it was in the 90s earlier this week, and now we're in the 40s because, you know, it's the Midwest. So like autumn's here. <laughs> we went from summer, literally yesterday was the first day of autumn, and then it was 45 degrees last night, even though on Wednesday it was 95. Um... So we may get some warm temperatures back. I don't know that we'll get 95, probably not. Um, but it's not quite frosty weather yet and I love fall, but I don't like frosty. So we're hoping that we don't get frosty yet. So I'm gonna take my Stella, because we're gonna color with our water painter because obviously we're going no line watercolor, but I'm just gonna add a drip. And this is always a good thing to do if you have a new one. As you can see, it's starting to come down. I don't want a ton. Sometimes you can't control. But there's a little bit of Stella just mixed in there. So now our base coat is going to have that really pretty glisten to it. And it'll look like there's a little bit of frost on our pumpkin. So when you color with a water painter, this is our smallest one. I got rid of my dirty tissue. Let's get a new one. So I'm going to grab, this is my um, dried up thing of wet wipes. So they're kind of damp, but they're not wet. So I'm gonna put this here. You always wanna make sure your brush is the right color because they stain, but this, you can see it's coming out. And grab some of that Stella and kind of give it a good drop of water and kind of mix this area around right here. So this is what I'm gonna use. And then I'm gonna start here with this middle section and you don't wanna cover, color everything. I'm gonna leave some white. I'm gonna leave some places where you don't get any yellow at all. But this is gonna kind of be where the sun's hitting our pumpkin out in a little pumpkin patch. There's two ways you can do this. You can get your little section wet first and put stronger color and kind of let it move. Or you can do it this way 
which is, I think this is a good way if you've not done much watercolor. And look how big this design is. So it's really good for doing it. So again, this is crushed curry. Hopefully you can still see the outline of my pumpkin. And all of the times that I color, all the colors I add, I am just going to add, I mean, I'm gonna paint one section at a time. And then I'm gonna leave some white open in the middle that eventually will get other colors in it. And with this, because we, we don't wanna see the line, I mean, obviously the color of the, the name of this technique is no line watercolor. So you wanna make sure that you are covering up the lines. And again, we'll do it with more colors because the crushed curry does not cover up the sand. That's why if you use a yellow, like if you use so saffron, that's a really good color most of the time to do this technique with. So there we have our um, crushed curry. You want to make sure that you get the yellow out of the tip. So you can see if you just do it onto a tissue or a dry piece of paper until it's running clear. And now with the pale papaya, I'm going to go on the opposite side. So this time, most of my pale papaya is going to be on this, the right hand side of each of the sections. You want to make sure that your brush stays nice and wet and that you keep putting water into your little ink pad lid here. If you don't want to use, do this to your ink pads, I know some people don't like to put the water in the top of them. All you need to do is take some ink refill and put it like on a styrofoam plate or a little glass tray. This time I'm grabbing this side over here and the colors will mix, but if your paper gets too dry, it's not, it's just going to drag. It's not going to, it's going to make lines of color as opposed to the fun watercolor look. Now, some of these places where I kept the, the larger amounts of white, you can see now I'm just adding a little strip of the pale papaya. So it's just another way that the sun's playing off the, the pumpkin in the patch. And then where there's all these shadings, at, you'll, and you'll see them. You probably can't see them anymore, but on the stamp, they have these marks here. So those I'm going to try to always get a little bit of all the colors. And really, this pumpkin is so nice to do this on, it's really hard to mess it up. So there's that one. You want to make sure that you have enough water, but not so much water, that if you have too much water in each section, it will bleed into the other. that and we don't want a yellow pumpkin and I know some of you are probably thinking that looks pretty yellow but now we're going to start to cover it up so here's our pumpkin pie and because we have that base of of yellow underneath until we get the top color of pumpkin it'll have a really fun shading to it because all of the pumpkin then won't look like it's one color Put a little bit more water in here. And then I'm not going to talk as I do this because this is the most amount of painting. That way I'll be able to fast forward it so you can see what's happening. But I don't want to sound like a chipmunk. Okay, so now we have a really pretty pumpkin and you can see where at some point you can see almost all of the colors. 
because you don't want to lose any of all of the colors, but you do want them to mix. Now we're going to give it the definition with the Cajun craze. So we've gone from our lightest, brightest color to our darkest color. This time I'm going to do a little bit less water on my brush. So I'm going to put a little bit here and then I'm going to pull some color down in it so I can control how much water. Because I, since this is our highlight, I don't want it to blend everywhere. I don't want everything to have Cajun craze. So the first time through, I'm going to add this. And you can see because the paper's wet, it's, it is bleeding on its own, which is beautiful. And that's what we want. So this first time, it'll have a little bit more water. And again, I'm going with each little section. Giving them back their definition that we've kind of lost because all the color's bleeding together. Some of it you won't be able to see anymore because now we have covered up that Sahara sand for the most part. But you know what the stamp looks like. That's why this is a really good one if you've never done this technique before to practice on. Okay, so now we've got it where I did it with some water. Now I'm going to try to just get little hints of it with hardly any water at all. And we're going to put those lines back in. They will bleed because your paper's wet, but you don't, you want it to bleed. You don't want, in nature, it wouldn't have a straight line in the color. But now I know where those lines were by the Stampin' Up! Artist. And you have this little piece right here that you can kind of refer back to. So I'm not going to squish out more, much water until my pen gets dry. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna get this little stem up here and because we're gonna use some brown, I'm gonna have one last little color that I can kind of add to it. My pumpkin's gotten a little bit larger. Um, I always do darker when I'm filming because I'm always like, oh, I wonder if they, if they can see that and then sometimes it bleeds a little bit more, but it's still gonna fit inside the dye and you can see the dye is gonna give it its definition back after we add that last little hint of brown. So go back to our Sahara sand stem and again this will cover it right up because color on color and it's pretty light up there so I'm going to kind of fill this in and then get our early espresso again pretty dry brush for this one so don't squeeze out any more water because look how tiny that area is and then we're going to add it to this that's pretty wet because you can see that that's just bleeding on its own I'll get this one side and just a little bit of hints of that. And I'm just going to pick up a couple of dark places and kind of just give a little bit of definition where I think it could use it. But you want to be careful because you don't want a blob of, of espresso. So kind of go where it's a little bit dark already. And just add in a tiny bit of shading. And this is going to look different every single time you ever do it because the water is controlling part of it, how much ink you get and where it goes. So this pumpkin doesn't look 
I mean, it does look like my other one, but very, very different. But it's also great if you want to do like a card that has more than one pumpkin on it, because in nature, the pumpkins aren't all identical, right? So if you're gonna take the time to watercolor, you want it to look a little bit like um, you knew what you were doing. I mean, what nature knew what it was doing. So here it is. This has a tad bit yellow in some places for me. So I'm going to go back to my pale papaya. I'm gonna leave the, the little bit of espresso. There's not much in here. In any place where I feel like it's still a little yellow, I'm just gonna cover it up. But now this papaya has that tiny bit of espresso in it as well. So it's one more color that we're kind of adding to it. So we have this. I'm going to run this through and then I'm just gonna take that to my paper trimmer and cut out a square. All right, I have cut these out. This one, you can see I just trimmed it with my paper trimmer to make it straight. This one here, I know when I was, um, coloring, you're probably like, oh, she got out of the lines. But when you put this on here and it trims it out, this one's a little bit bigger because everything bled a little bit more. I can't pick it up. So my pumpkin's a little bit bigger. Now you're going to see, I'll show you when I show you my, the first card I did, I have more of a white border around it, but it's still a pumpkin, right? And it looks different than my other pumpkin, which is kind of what we're going for if you're going to put two on one card. So for this ribbon, I have our silver cord it's on my spool i didn't take it off so i can't tell you what it is and then the espresso so i'm just going to use a little bit of ribbon because the the stamp set does come with like some twirlies and pumpkin vines but i didn't i want this to be the star of the show and this is pretty striking and then that background we have is also a lot so i didn't want the ribbon to kind of compete with anything so you may have seen this if you watched my other fond of autumn video where you take this apart so, you know, one spool of this equals a lot of the little um, linen threads that we have because it's stiffer. I mean, this is not thread, but it's kind of the same look. So this time, last time I took it all the way apart and then I put it all back on. This time I'm going to take out about four, I think I took out. We'll see. I thought I left them here because I am going to use them on one of the other cards that I do with this set because there's no point in having that go to waste. So there's four. I'm going to take out one more. So that leaves two in here and then the silver cord. And then this I'm going to put to the side and I will use this on another card in our fall series. So flip this over. Mine is still a little bit wet. So I want to be careful. I'm going to add this won't stick greatly because the paper stamp, but we'll make it work. So just kind of fold it. You don't want them to be even, but not too uneven. How's that for a term? Stick that there and then do the same thing with this. And with this one kind of V it like this, you don't want them to be right next to each other because you want it to be spread out. And then stick that in there and then take your dimensionals and that will help secure it all. Now this one, I would wait if I was you till it's all the way dry. Mine's not all the way dry. I'm gonna put that right there. And then we'll add three more to help stick this to the card. And then I'm gonna stick one on the H end of my hello. Make sure I got the right end. That way when it layers over the pumpkin, this side will be this the height that it needs to be. Now let's take a look at this. Isn't that fun? It looks like it has the rust, it has the wood, it has the crunched up leaves that you get everywhere in fall. It's a really fun splattery look. And you can see where it splatters more, it kind of removes more of the, the gold backing. It's so much fun. And every time again, it's gonna be a little bit different, but less is more until you know what you're doing. Otherwise, all you do is take off all the gold and then you have silver foil. So here's our espresso. I think this is dry sometimes where it pools up right there. I can see a little bit wet right there. So I'm going to go ahead again, wait till yours dries, but nobody wants to sit here and literally watch alcohol dry <laughs> while I'm filming, right? So I'm just going to be careful when I add mine. And again, this would stick better. All of it would stick better if it is um, all the way dry. So now you got to decide, my, I'm going to put my pumpkin over here. So that's how much I'm going to have of this showing. 
or I can have that much showing. So I think I'm gonna go this way. But sometimes on our projects, we have a side that's definitely better than the other. Right there's where it's a little bit wet. Of course, right where I'm gonna put my pumpkin. Peel these off. Doesn't that just pop? And it's still pretty wet. I put a lot of water on there. That's the great thing about using the watercolor card stuff. You can't do, you, you couldn't do it at all on basic white or vanilla. It would just destroy your paper. Um, and you can do it some on shimmer white, but not to the extent. Shimmer white has a coating. So as long as you're on top of the coating, but once the paper gets really wet, then again, the shimmer white can kind of peel away on itself. So for my embellishments, I'm going to use the rustic metallic dots, of course, because that's fun and I've used these in a class, so they're kind of cut up. I'm gonna use five and I'm gonna use all the same um, size. So one, two, I'm gonna keep them all this way so this side stays a little bit clear. So we've got three and then four. Five. I'm trying to keep them, it may be harder for you to see where there's a lot of the brown splotches. I don't want these to compete with that. I really like the way that looks. So here's this one. I wish you could see in person. And I always like when I'm doing the retreat with them because I'm like, you're gonna see it in person in just a second when you make it yourself. But that little bit of Stella, remember way back at step one that we added, has a little bit of shimmer to our pumpkin. So here's this one. Love the background. Love my pumpkin. Here's this one. Totally different looking background and a totally different looking pumpkin. Just because it was all painted. So when it's hand painted and when it's spritzed, uh, especially with the spritz, you don't have a lot of control over where that stuff goes. This one, I put this a little lower because I was trying to keep this open. This, I really like the way this looks like rust on this part of the card. This one, the rust all went more over because it was the first time I had done it with the blends like this. I did it, I did this before I did the Fond of Autumn card, but I wanted to keep going with the same theme. This one, it just has a little bit too much alcohol if you wanna keep that rust kind of contained in the middle. But I will try to get a couple, it's really, really hard to film to photograph the metallic paper, but I'll try to get a couple of decent pictures and um, put those over on my blog. So be watching for the sign up for the Art of Stamping for the Christmas retreat. It's not gonna be as big as this last one because I know once October hits, we all get busy. Um, but if you wanna give a fabulous Christmas card to somebody, this is the class you'll wanna take. So I will catch you back later and the next time I will, maybe the next time, yeah, probably, I'll use some of this. See ya.